Samantha Fabrice. After making her name in Italy, culminating in winning the Scudetto with Corneliano, she's taken her talents to join an all-star cast with Dinamo Kazan. Respected by the players and loved by the fans, we thought she'd be the perfect guest for our first unscripted live. So here we go, I'm going to call to check in. Samantha, hello, welcome to Unscripted, how are you? Hello, thank you, I'm fine, you? Yeah, really well. Uh, you are our first guest on Unscripted Live. We've been doing them for months, but we thought it's time to go to the next level. And you are the perfect guest for this. So no pressure, but I'm really looking forward to having a chat. Um, we've also, I'm not going to say exactly how many, but we've got a good few hundred watching already. So this is very, very exciting. Whoa. You're back in Russia. How is it? Yes, I'm in Russia almost uh, one month. I'm really happy to be back here to start with practice with my old team and uh, really it's also exciting because now it's still sun uh, in Kazan, it's uh, really good weather so enjoying Russia. <laughs> Amazing, um, well and I'm glad to believe as well because your season, your official season hasn't started yet but it's been so hectic for you. How many games have you played already? Uh, we play already three games and uh, tomorrow and after tomorrow we have two more. We start with the Russian uh, qualification cup, so <laughs> we start uh, pretty, you know, <laughs> tough, but uh, it's good. It's good because uh, five matches in a row to get some rhythm because we missed a lot, everybody. <laughs> well, I can imagine, but after a long layoff, five games, you must be absolutely exhausted. <laughs> How has it been being back on court then? Did you miss it, firstly and foremostly? How much were you looking forward to getting back to playing? Oh, have I lost you? Oh, yeah, can, sure. can you still hear me? Okay. Yes, yes. Uh, for sure, I miss it. Everybody missed it because uh, for a long time uh, we were without volleyball and uh, we started with three matches in a row, so... <laughs> Good, good. I'm really, I'm really happy to be, to be back here, how I told you. And I spoke to a few players a couple of months ago and they were scared that when they came back, they wouldn't be able to jump. Their feet would just be stuck to the floor. Um, so how has that been for you, actually getting back and playing and jumping and swinging and scoring and all of those things you're so great at? Honestly, I was scared too. After uh, four months to not play volleyball, I was thinking, oh my God, maybe they're going to send me home <laughs> when I come in Kazan. <laughs> I don't know how I look. So, <laughs> But uh, not that bad. I don't know. This is what I think. But <laughs> uh, for sure, not. Uh, I don't have still um, my best condition, but I think that everybody needs to work now. And it's good that uh, we have these uh, matches now, this qualification uh, for Cup, so we can get some rhythm and uh, to prepare for uh, officially season start uh, 17, that is next week, we start uh, with our first uh, championship game. Well, and you're the defending champions as well, which is a strange one because, you know, you never got that moment where you won it on the court and you lifted the trophy. So do you feel like a champion? Do you feel like you're going on court defending that trophy or is it a little bit different to when you've won championships before? Uh, it is different. So uh, we play semi-final in, uh, in Moscow, like Tuesday, uh, Friday, they close everything. Monday, I uh, went home and in three days, they call us and they told us, so guys, you are uh, champions of Russia. But <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I was happy, but I don't know. In all this situation, you don't think about volleyball, but you, are, uh, you get one trophy more. So, but... You know, it's not like the same when you get on the podium and you are happy and you deserve it. But uh, it's one trophy more, so not bad. But, uh, yes? Did you get a medal? Yes, we get a medal. Great, great, <laughs> great, great. So am I right in thinking now that's Russian Championship, Italian Championship? Did you win the Croatian Championship too? Four Croatian Championships. Four Croatian, of course you did. Amazing. <laughs> So every, every country you've played in as a pro, you've, you've won the national championship. That's not bad. And of course, back in the Champions League, where you belong. Yes, really. Uh, last year we played Chev Cup. Yeah. But uh, I really miss Champions League. Uh, when I signed for Kazan, uh, we are supposed to play Champions League and uh, where they lose some... Uh, 
uh, they lose some matches for third place and they say me like we're gonna play Tsev I was like a little bit disappointed mm, okay. but I think it was good for us to play Tsev last year uh, because I was new in the team so you know to step by step to start to know each other and uh, we grew a lot last season and we show also in Tsev we come we beat two Italian teams so it was really good for us but this year Champions League and I really hope uh, we will be able to play it. Well because you beat Busto in the last game, didn't you? And you mentioned the Italian teams there. And, you know, the Italian league is always the sort of measuring stick. People say it's the best league. That's a really good look for your team and the Russian league to show that you can compete with and beat those Italian teams, right? Really, for, for us, it uh, was a really big thing because uh, to beat the second Italian team and 3-0... Was was really we were so happy and uh, like uh, <laughs> almost everybody was surprised uh, to be honest. But uh, really, um, how I told you, really grew a lot last season, and I think we have also a lot of space to improve more. So I I think that this team really can show really good volleyball. Do you think you'd have won it? You'd have won the the Chev Cup, the CV Cup. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> 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 Sure, we went there for it. This Good. was our point. <laughs> and looking at your Champions League draw as well, there are going to be lots of tests because in your group, am I correct in thinking you've got Navarra and uh, is it Chemic Police from Poland too? Yeah. Big teams, that's what you want. Yes, and um, so honestly, the day before, uh, before uh, drawing, uh, me and Sam, uh, we were speaking in the car like what we want in our group and um, we wish three countries from uh, who we get two of them oh, wow. and we are so so happy so <laughs> two, of the two countries we want to uh, to go to see to see some people who really really who we really missed in uh, Kazan and uh, one uh, country to go in some really good place but we get two of three so not bad <laughs> Um, what was the third country that you wanted? <laughs> well, okay, okay, secret. Uh, when you get the Champions League draw next year, hopefully you get it and we can talk then. Um, also, the, so you're going to the Czech Republic, to, to Olomouc. I went there last year. It's a really cool gym. It's like a, a sort of small gym in a school, like really old fashioned. I think you'll really like playing there. So three places to look forward to. I already played in Olomouc, oh, so then oh. we played in Mevza, but was I, I think maybe 10 years ago. Okay, okay. Well. <laughs> hey, ten, ten, years, 10 years is a long time, even, even longer for me, less so for you. Um, you mentioned <laughs> Sam there. Now, fans of Unscripted who are watching will, uh, will have known that we talked about you two joining up again. And I don't want to say anything and in case whatever, but she was really, really looking forward to linking back up with you, the way you play on the court, the way your friends off the court. Um, is, it, is it the same for you? How is it being back together, the Sams reunited? But really, uh, can you imagine when in one place uh, there is only two corners? One of them, it's you and another can be your uh, really good friend. So. Perfect. Um, what can I say more? But really, I'm so satisfied uh, because I'm so happy that she's here uh, with me in the court, out of the court, and uh, every hard uh, moment, like if there is until now, we didn't have it, but uh, for sure uh, will be easier to pass with her. I hope she's not listening to this because. <laughs> <laughs> but oh. I'm, I'm really, I'm really happy that uh, that she's here. Really. Nah, it's nice, because as I said, and, uh, she... I was oh. a player also, she's a great player and the uh, person outside of the court and just uh, just can't wait to rock again together. It's good, yeah. I, well, I'm looking forward to seeing it as well, because I think, obviously, you're both fantastic players, you play incredibly well, but I, I think some of the best teams, particularly in European volleyball, if you've got that relationship and you all sort of work together and, and build together and play together, you can do some special things. Um, so Russia's, Russia's a really interesting country and I've never been, but particularly in a sporting sense, they fascinate me because they're such amazing athletes. They, they create such success. So how is it for you to kind of, to, to go there and, and to be accepted? I know you've spoken before about how surprised you were by how they sort of welcomed you 
when you first arrived? How's it been? Really, uh, I was a little bit scared because first time I go that far from my home and I uh, play in Italy for seven years and was near my home. I see my families, my friends. And uh, the first time I go, so in Russia, cold uh, weather, not so good. And I was a little bit scared, but when I come here and I meet uh, all of these people, those people who really who are really respectable, who the some club there is really good uh, organization, uh, really everything top. Uh, girls was they are still really great, uh, and uh, I don't know. I just fell in love with this city and this team and all of them. And uh, because of this, I also signed two more years here. So. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that says everything really. In a sport like volleyball where people move around and sometimes you can only be at a place for one season to, to sign an extension. Uh, but very different to your most recent Italian experience because you had a great few years with Corneliano, but that's such a small place. And then, you know, you move to Kazan, over a million people. That's a, that's a different lifestyle. Are you enjoying it being a bit busier and a bit sort of more vast? Sure, sure, uh, it's different. In Corneliano, a really small city, and but uh, honestly, there is not a lot of things to do in Corneliano, like everybody could imagine. But uh, <laughs> there uh, we uh, have a really good team, and it's really small city, but uh, with so, how I can say, like everybody follow volleyball, everybody there, you can feel it like everybody leave for you to, to yeah. go to the match, to cheer for you, to share emotion with you. So in Corneliano was really too special year for, uh, I passed really too special, sorry, too special year uh, for me. And with this team was incredible. And after coming to Kazan, uh, city over 1 million people, um, I like it. I like it a lot because here uh, I was, when I come here, I say, oh my God, a <laughs> big difference. <laughs> but <laughs> Um, I like Kazan a lot. Uh, Kazan is also a sports city. There is a lot of sports that you can watch in your free time. Uh, for the first time, I watched hockey in in a live, so I was so so surprised too. And there is really good basketball, uh, football, men volleyball. Like everybody knows, in it Kazan. And really, really, I, I'm so happy here. Do not look, do not think that you can be a hockey player now, because if you fall on those skates and hurt yourself, I feel like I'll get the blame for that. So just, just look after yourself, right? Goodness me. <laughs> How is your Russian? Have you, have you learned Russian at all? Or are you, it's a hard language. I'm Russian, I'm so hard to show. <laughs> oh, well, yeah, all right, done. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I'll come back. I'll come back in six more months, and you can give me a bit of a lesson because I'd uh, I'd love to learn. So absolutely amazing place. Um, so those of you that are watching live, and I'm looking at the numbers here, there are plenty of you here. This is unscripted live with uh, Samantha Van Brees. We're going to keep her for a few more minutes here on Facebook, and then we're going to head over to Instagram. So head over to Instagram with us, and then we're going to do a live Q and A session. I've got some questions lined up, and if you want to ask a question. You can ask it via the, uh, via the live stream and then I will pass it on. So brace yourself, Samantha. We could get all, all kinds, any kinds of questions. Hopefully there'll be nice ones. <laughs> uh, but before we head over, I'd love to talk about the national team because you've had success with the national team, Mediterranean Games gold, EuroLeague silver. Um, how do you feel about your time with the national team so far and what are your what are your ambitions you've achieved so much in the club game and i bet you've got so much more that you want to achieve but in terms of pulling on that national team jersey where do you see your future and what does success look like so um last european championship uh, we show uh, like a team that uh, we really show good volleyball so we show a team that we can play good volleyball and after in uh, olympic qualification um, we was we were underdog there because it was really hard tournament and there we showed that we need whole summer to work with uh, Daniele who is really great coach and uh, I'm so happy that he's uh, with us and uh, I think he's perfect for our team because uh, we are now a young team with a lot of uh, potential so with him I think that we can really grow, grow up and um, I'm 
happy because next year uh, we will play a lot of tournaments at home. Uh, the Challenge Cup that we missed uh, this summer, so uh, that we can play against the best one and see like where we can be. And after this European uh, Championship, I hope that a lot of people are going to come and cheer for us and that we can show some good volleyball. Uh, what else? Nothing. We're a young team. We need to work uh, a lot. I'm the oldest almost, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, I believe in this team and uh, with hard work and sacrification, I think we can, we can show good volleyball and we can be some nice surprise. Well, I hope so. And lots to look forward to. You mentioned hosting the tournaments. You're a, you're a volley host alongside Serbia, Bulgaria and Romania. Um, how proud are you to be bringing the European Championships to your home nation? So proud, really. So proud and so proud to, uh, to get this jersey on me. And uh, I hope that I will help my team. I will give really my best uh, to try to help them and that we can really show good volleyball at home uh, and uh, that a lot of fun is going to come. Because volleyball, it's, we didn't like, show great, uh, great matches in, in the past uh, except this European Championship. So I hope that we can start uh, good and bring uh, day by day more and more people. You mentioned uh, your, well, not your exact age, but you said that you were one of the, the oldest in the team. Uh, as, you, as you get older and as your career progresses, do you feel your, your role changing, like you are the experienced one and it maybe isn't just your responsibility to perform on the court, you've got to sort of nurture and coach and train these younger players coming through and show them what they can achieve at the top level? Uh, when I come first time in national team, uh, I really had around me really big names uh, like Poljak, Baron, Ulšić, Popović, Miloš, Grbac, all these uh, all these great players who really, really had. We were fighting the European Championship, so we really had a great team. Uh, and after day by day, years by year, they just left, and now I'm there. How I told you already, almost the oldest one. But I think. Uh, uh, sure, I need to take responsible and I need to to try to help my team. Uh, when some younger player come, I really this what I want, but I don't know if I give this to them. I really want to uh, help them to that they show their best. So, and I I really believe in our young uh, younger player, and uh, I don't know. I am I'm, I'm just so happy that to share with them my summer must be unbelievable every time you pull on that national team jersey must be an incredibly proud moment um you mentioned Maya Poljak there when we head over to Instagram we spoke to her and I've got a I've got something that she said about you so if you're watching here on Facebook head over to Instagram because it's uh, it's quite fun but uh, yeah and I suppose you you talking about players like her when you were first coming into the national team the younger players coming into the national team will probably talk about you in that way. Is that something that you're, you're comfortable with? Do you see it like that? I don't know. I just hope that uh, I can be a good example for some of them, that, I, that they can maybe, some really young player who come, that they can learn something from me, that I can show them. And uh, nothing, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> Simple as that. Uh, right then, we've been speaking for about 20 minutes, so I'm going to get a telling off here because I was told 15, but I could speak to you all day. Thank you so much for joining us. This is our very first unscripted live. Uh, Samantha, you're our first guest. We've got Svetan Sokolov joining us on Sunday for those who are watching now. Um, but do you think, Samantha, is this a good time to go over to Instagram and, and do the Q&A? I'm not nervous about it, I promise. Oh, you think it's a good idea. Oh, and well, for those, while I, while I drop everything and ruin the place, uh, for the fans that are watching us now, have you got a, a message for them? Would you like to say hello? I hope, guys, that uh, you have really quality Friday and <laughs> not asking too much. <laughs> Oh, quality Friday. Well, we're having a quality Friday. It's unscripted live, rock and roll. Samantha, this has been brilliant. Thank you so much. Everyone watching, head over to CV's Instagram now for a live Q&A session. 
get your questions in. But until then, Samantha, bye-bye. Speak to you in a bit. Bye. Nice to see you. Bye-bye. Welcome to Unscripted Live, or welcome back to Unscripted Live. We've hopped over to Instagram with Samantha Fabrice. How are you? It's been, what, five minutes since we last spoke? Yes, thank you. Fine. <laughs> um, so now we're going to change tact a little bit. We found out how you are. We found out where you are and what you've been up to. Uh, but now we're going to do some question and answer stuff and, uh, well, try and find out a little bit more, if that's okay with you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, so I mentioned Maya Polyak before. Uh, while the people come pouring in from the corners of the internet, uh, we asked her about, well, no, we asked her about you. Yeah, that's correct. Uh, before I before I say what she said, what's your relationship like with Maya? Obviously, you've played for the national team together for so long, but how'd you get on off the court? It's better that I say now after I heard this, or? <laughs> no, <laughs> that's why I've asked you now before I say what she said. <laughs> no, no, really, I, I like Maya so much. She's amazing. And uh, the first two years when I came in national team, like I was 17, I, I never spoke to her because I was just, Samantha, just work and give your best and try to improve for her. But after uh, how I uh, grew up and uh, step by step after we, we start to have had some relation and now really uh, I like her so much. Fantastic. That's great to know. Um, but I get that though. As a 17 year old, when you sort of walk into the gym and maybe you've got like your first Croatia tracksuit on or whatever, and you've seen her growing up and she's one of the best in the world, like that, that must be quite intimidating. Yes, yes, it was. <laughs> like. <laughs> Every before, uh, before uh, every practice, just you know, first practice is was a little bit nervous because you you practice with the best one, so just show your best what yeah. can be used in this moment. So she said, Samantha is so physically strong. Every time we were in the gym, it's like she could lift up a building. <laughs> yeah. We used to make fun of her that as soon as her mum could feed her, she just fed her steak straight away. <laughs> yeah. Another thing that was funny was that when she was beginning practice, in the breaks between practice, she'd help her parents with washing the dishes at their restaurant, which is an amazing restaurant. But after practice, she wouldn't have much sensibility because she always used to break glasses when she did the dishes. <laughs> Maya. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what Maya said. Uh, let's let's start at the top then. Lifting up a building in the gym. Were you throwing around some serious tin? <laughs> no, really. Uh, before I really lifted a lot, and uh, when I was younger. But now I think uh, I don't need to lift that much. So I don't. I put some dose and I see how, how I really need. And I have also now my uh, private uh, conditioner coach oh, and nice. he helped me in all these things. And uh, <laughs> thank you, Maya. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you know, you, you mentioned lifting weights there. I have this image of uh, during quarantine or lockdown or wherever it was for everywhere around the world. I thought all of the players were just going to have just been lifting and everyone was going to come back super edge and just looking like they were ready for the beach. Yes, can you imagine that um, when I start, uh, when I come home from Russia, I have uh, some isolation, self-isolation, and during my isolation, I just order weights <laughs> and I put my uh, small fitness at home. So when I came out of uh, isolation, I just can just start to practice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So. Oh, made it this quality. Um, and let's go to this. Uh, let's go to the restaurant thing then. Washing dishes with your parents in the restaurant, and then breaking glasses when you were supposed to be washing them. What's the story there? Uh, the story. <laughs> First, thank you, Maya, for uh, uh, put some reclame of my restaurant. <laughs> Mom. <laughs> so whoever is in Istria can pass in in restaurants and try some uh, traditional Istrian food. Okay. Uh, yes, when I was uh, younger, I help uh, I help my parents. Now I don't have time and all my uh, uh, like uh, with the uh, sorry schedule with my schedule and all team all games with the national team. There is no much time, but I like I like to help them. And for sure, when I start to work, I was a little bit 
I don't know how to say, but not that good in this. And there's a lot of, a lot of, <laughs> yes, break stuff. And, but okay. Also after lifting uh, really, you know, uh, heavy weights to come to clean the glass was not that easy. But <laughs> I can just imagine you like, oh, smash. I'm just too strong. Smash. Um, what is traditional Istrian food then? What would you recommend if I was to visit the restaurant? There is a, we have a boshkarin. It's like one uh, traditional Istrian uh, animal, and it's really good uh, beef tech, beef, and also carpaccio. And but uh, there is uh, also a really good truffle. So uh, beef with, uh, with truffles, I recommend. Sounds like I would go there and put on five kilos in a week, and it would be amazing. Um, right, if you're watching live on Instagram, I've got my phone here. I'm gonna I'm gonna check in, and we're gonna give well put some of your questions to oh we've got people watching fantastic major perko he's in good to see you mark get your question in um but i'm going to start with a game called simply the best so i'm going to ask you a series of questions and i want you to tell me what you think the best thing is in each category okay mm -hmm. right question number one what's the best sport that isn't volleyball uh, beach volleyball. Oh, okay, great. <laughs> who is who is the best Croatian athlete or sports person of all time? Um, Mate Farlo. Tell me more. Uh, box boxer. He uh, he win uh, Olympic game. He will. Uh, he won uh, uh, whatever he went. He won everything. So he was one of our best for sure. But we have a really. A lot of uh, good sportsmen like uh, Blanka Vlasic, uh, Luka Modric in football, like everybody know. Um, we have, I don't know, really a lot. Uh, oh my God, no, my, my, my brain stuff. But <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a great answer. I'm here for it. Goal, so really, really a lot. Janice Evita Kostelic. Samantha Fabrice. <laughs> <laughs> What's the best song to listen to before a game? Oh, depends how I feel. <laughs> so there is not one song that I listen every time, but sometimes I need something hard, sometimes something depends how I feel. Best moment of your career so far? Um, I don't know, maybe final of uh, World uh, Club Championship, but I think winning first Italian championship was something special. Yeah, winning the Scudetto, that's, uh, that's yeah. unbelievable. Uh, what's the best atmosphere you've experienced in a volleyball match? Um, Italian. I think Corneliano fans are amazing, but uh, also uh, when we play in uh, European Championship in Turkey, in front of 10,000 uh, people was, was also incredible. Yeah, those Turkish fans, they go wild, don't they? Also, you say Corneliano, that was... Um, that my first ever Champions League game uh, that I commentated on was at the Palo Verde and you were playing. And I, the, the band that banged the drums throughout the whole thing, the amazing support. What's the best thing about being a professional, professional sports person? There is a lot of good things, but uh, I don't know, share, to be pro. Okay. Uh, even in, in team sport to share your like good things and bad teams with your team yeah i love that best volleyball player of all time and that's such a horrible question i know but you know it's in the ether now and it's live so you have to answer <laughs> next question <laughs> best volleyball player all of the time oh my god uh, i don't know I, uh... okay have you got a favorite I don't have any. Okay. Where's the best place in the world that volleyball's taken you? Uh, sorry, can you repeat? Where's the... The best place, the best country in the world that volleyball has taken you? Uh, um, Italy, for sure, because it's the best championship. I think the, the strongest, one of the strongest, but uh, maybe the best one to be in can be maybe some Spain or Greece, because there is a sea. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful sea in Croatia as well, though. Yes, true. 
really nice uh what's the best food to eat after a game and you are allowed to say your parents restaurant if you like yeah some i don't know you know after a match is a cheat day <laughs> so <laughs> something that you that you don't eat every day like before a match if you weren't a professional volleyball player what would you be a lawyer really yep that's I, serious <laughs> I started my university of love uh, uh, when I uh, was 18. I, uh, yes, I've been there for two years and after I leave for, uh, for Italy. But now this year I start uh, to study again. So uh, <laughs> I oh, start wow. in love. So we're going to see if I can, can make everything together. Oh, amazing. So is that something you, you think you'll do when volleyball finishes, maybe? I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> We will see. Keeping your options open. Right. I'm looking for questions here and we've got loads of people watching. Hello to all of you. Thank you so much for tuning in. We've got people watching in Indonesia, all the way in Indonesia. How amazing is that? We've got Portugal. We've got Russia. We've got Italy. We've got Turkey. Who else? Is that a Cuban flag? This is amazing. People, nice. people are watching, Samantha. This is cool. Hi to everyone. Um, right. So you speak lots of languages uh, definitely english because we're speaking in english croatian italian yes <clears throat> and a, and some russian russian yes okay I'm, uh, yes um Sorry. i want to know your favorite word in each of the languages so what is your favorite word in croatian favorite word in croatian mm. just bearing in mind it's a family show and it's quite early here so it can't be a naughty one <laughs> I don't know, priatelstvo. What does that mean? Like friendship. And say it again. Priatelstvo. Priatelstvo. Yeah, pri priatelstvo. Priatelstvo. Oh, ah. yeah. Four. Three yeah. of five. <laughs> Pri oh, I thought you were going to say three of ten. I nearly, I nearly hung up the phone. The interview was nearly over. Okay. <laughs> your favorite, your favorite word in English. In English. Uh, I don't have favorite word, but if I need to choose one, um, a lawyer. Lawyer, okay. Russian? Konyeshna. Konyeshna, what does that mean? Uh, for sure. For sure, Konyeshna, all right. And Italian? Like, of course, of course. Italian... Uh, there is some that maybe I can... <laughs> <laughs> Amica. And um, what does that mean? Mm, friend. Okay. All right. So um, we've got a couple of questions coming in. So we've got Mark, Mark in Leicester. So he's watching from England. It's a great sport in England. So thanks for tuning in, Mark. Um, so I've been asking like what your best moments are. He wants to know what has been the worst moment of your career so far. That's a horrible question. <laughs> but what has been the worst moment or the most disappointed you've been? In your it's career so far, uh, for sure, first time in final of uh, European and if a World Class Championship, mm. and second one uh, the Champions League uh, with Corneliano, the finals because uh, we lost the finals and was also my last match for Corneliano and I didn't play so good so I was really really disappointed. Did you know it was going to be your last match? Yes, yes, I knew it. Uh, yeah, that that is tough. You want to go out on a high and. Play so well, they retire your jersey and all of those things. <laughs> <laughs> oh, amazing. Um, okay, we've got another question here. Um, if at the end of your career, you could have one medal that you don't have, which medal would it be? And it can be for club or international national team. For sure, I think uh, every sportsman would like to win some Olympic Games some medal from Olympic, but uh, I don't think this is not that realistic for us. But uh, maybe some, I don't know. I think also European medal with our national team could be a really great thing. Do you think you can reach an Olympic Games? Because it's very, very difficult to qualify out of Europe, it is. isn't it? I mean, the standard of that tournament in Apeldoorn in January was unbelievable like how well turkey had to play in those last couple of games to get there 
But, you know, with this group of young players you've got now, with you leading them, with your experience, do you think Paris, maybe? <laughs> maybe, who knows? Now with the, with the new, I don't know, now it's new scoring. So you take points uh, for each tournament you play. So maybe now it's going to be maybe easier. But also, I don't know, it's going to be enough for us. But for sure, we're going to try. And I don't know, until Paris, like, oof, there is... Uh, a lot of volleyball. <laughs> No, five five more years, so I don't think. Yeah, <laughs> so. I mean, you've got you've got two games this weekend. I wouldn't like to think how many games there is between <laughs> between this. Um, I tell you what. So Billy, uh, Billy's watching, and Billy says a VNL medal would be really nice. So maybe that's something that you guys can, uh, yes, can go first. for. Tony's watching in India. So cool, uh, Hanishan. We've already kind of asked this, but. Um, has asked who is your favorite player and that's perhaps a better question because I asked who you think the best player was so Hani Shan wants to know who is your favorite player male or female honestly really I, I don't have my favorite player usually okay. uh, I don't okay yes really this is honestly <laughs> no that's do you know what and that and that's that's actually quite good I, I like it because if you said anybody and they're still playing and then you were across the net from them, they'd have that on you. So you'd have to, yeah. Um, do you ever, do you ever get involved with things through the net? Cause you know, you've obviously there's the net separating you, but you're always so close to your opponents without touching them. Do you kind of sort of make eye contact and maybe have a little bit of chat with your, with your opponents or do you like to keep quiet? Uh, I don't know. I for sure I'm not a person who's gonna start uh, first to I don't know make some. I just want to play, enjoy, and for sure win. But if someone start uh, like this, make me this help me to to be better for sure. Because when someone starts to make some kind of this, I just give even more that I can. So I like it. <laughs> <laughs> um, you said the word enjoy there. Do you always enjoy it out on the court? Is it something that you look forward to playing every week? Yes, I, I try. I try to enjoy. This is the first thing I try. I think uh, without enjoying, uh, you can win, but this is not the same thing. So the first thing I try to enjoy. Next question. Is there anything in your kit bag that you wouldn't ever play without? Is there anything, any like superstitions, any good luck charms you have in there? Or is it always just like knee pads, shoes, shorts, I'm, I'm in? Uh, it's a good thing if I take, <laughs> took everything. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Uh, no, nothing, nothing. That Just knee pads, shoes and jersey, that's all. Okay. Do you bring your own jersey or does somebody pack it for you? No, no, I bring. By myself. Oh wow! Have you ever forgotten it? No, I bring the uh, the Russian ones and the European one, everything together. So <laughs> just <in case>. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, this uh, you do not have to answer this. By the way, ah, oh, we've got we've got a message coming in here saying I love we've got love Samantha, love Fabrice. People love you. This is awesome. Um, and again, you're watching Unscripted Live. This is the first one we've done. So thank you to you, Samantha, but also thank you, thank you for everybody. watching as well. We've still got a few minutes to get your questions in. Um, what is the most crazy thing you ever did in your life? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I don't make any crazy things, so I don't know. What <laughs> Always well behaved. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe for me, crazy, the craziest thing can be, I don't know, one thing for another. And then, I don't know, really. Okay. Are there any, um, are there any troublemakers on the team? If there was, if there was going to be somebody causing trouble in the national team or in your club team, who do you think it would be? In trouble? Oh. Fun trouble, not like, not bad trouble. <laughs> uh, for sure, Beta Duman teach a national team. Um, in club, oh, there is a few of them. <laughs> <laughs> sure, but in Corneliano, when I play, that was almost a half team. So, <laughs> but but it's so quiet in Corneliano. You had to cause trouble for entertainment. I, do you know, yes. I, I've asked a few people this because I talked about um, what I said earlier, didn't I? The first Champions League game I went to 
was at the Palo Verde and I had such a good time and the game was great and, and you all played fantastically well and I got a great welcome. But then the game finished and there's like, I couldn't find anywhere to go and eat. Like there was just, just, just nothing there. What did you all do after a match? Uh, after a match, uh, I told you it was, was really good because team was uh, team were special, really. We really had a special relationship. So it was never boring, really. We never get bored to stay uh, together, I don't know, having fun. Uh, or maybe if uh, there was some free days, uh, sometimes I bring uh, my teammates in Croatia or uh, we go and explore some other things. We've been in Merano from where it was like uh, Rafa and Sylvie. And uh, was 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 nice, really. I really had spent a really good time there. Uh, we've actually had a question here from Mishibasa. Thank you for getting your your question in. Uh, the question is, do you miss playing for a Moco? But I'm gonna reword that. Did you enjoy playing for them? And have you got happy memories of your time in Conegliano? Sure. Yes, I really uh, have really good memories, uh, especially because I won there my first Scudetto also second but you know the first time was really incredible and with the coach who is now also in national team so it was really special but i need to say that this cousin is really big concurrent to 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 imoko and to Coneliano because i'm really happy here and i love so much cousin and my new team it's also the kazan thing um you being there it's very exciting i mean you're in the champions league You've got a great squad of players. We talked earlier over on Facebook about the fact that you were beating Italian teams in the CV Cup. It's, you know, the, the sky's the limit, really. You could do very, very well this year. Do you agree? Uh, yes, I agree, because I think if you, if you want to win, it's not just that you bring a good player, but there's some team connection, good connection. And I think that uh, we have this. <laughs> And also show this that uh, all teams stays here also next year. So everybody signed two years contract. And uh, also this mean a lot because every foreigner was here in Kazan was like for a long time. Etsy was here three years. Uh, I think Del Corre three years. Larson even five. So mm -hmm. this, says, this says a lot about this, this team, this city and this really good organization, these people in club who, who really, they make unbelievable their job. So... The sky's limit, how do you say? <laughs> Watch this space. Uh, honestly, I can't wait to see how you get on. Um, I said we would have you for about half an hour. It's been nearly an hour, so I'm going to let you go now. But I'd just like to say thank you so much for being our first guest on Unscripted Live. It's been so great to speak to you. And glad that you're well, glad that you're enjoying your volleyball and, and that you're, you're making the most of being in Russia. And um, Has it been okay? Thank you. Thank you really uh, so much. It was nice to meet you, to yes. see you. And uh, thanks to all the people who watched, and I hope they are joined. Yeah, they I, ho I hope they did too. Uh, come back on Sunday morning, everyone. We've got Svetan Sokolov. It's 11 o'clock UK time, which I think is 12 o'clock Central European time. But if you keep your eye on all of the CEV social media, on Instagram, on Facebook, and uh, what's the other one? YouTube. Um, they will they will keep you up to date as to when that is. But if it is half as good as this has been, then it's definitely going to be worth tuning in for. Uh, Samantha, best of luck. Is that two games you've got tomorrow, did you say? Uh, tomorrow and after tomorrow, another one. So Great. Tomorrow. Well, good luck with those. I hope it goes well. Um, and I hope to catch up with you again in the season, maybe in the Champions League. Who knows? Um, have you got a final message for the fans? I don't know, just say everybody to be safe, uh, to enjoy their life, and see you soon. <laughs> Perfect stuff. Thank you, Samantha. Take care of yourself. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you.